Okay, everybody, we need to talk about another Doomy thing, okay? Which is, finally, at long last, landlords, girl bossin', always be girl bossin', always be girl bossin', always be girl bossin', always be girl bossin', ooh, 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 A, B, G, B, A, B, G, B, A, B, G, B, A, B, G, B, listen, world's best landlord, world's best property manager. Oh, now, before we get into the real stuff, I just want to read a funny article from a local newspaper. This is basically Seattle's equivalent of The Onion. It's called The Needling, okay? Landlord awaiting end to eviction moratorium excited to complain about unrelated surge in the homeless population. With the nationwide eviction moratorium set to expire tomorrow, landlords across the country are eagerly, eagerly awaiting the opportunity to complain about a massive incoming surge in local homeless populations that definitely has nothing to do with evicting thousands of families during the pandemic. I can't wait to boot these freeloading families out of my four rental properties so I can finally get back to pri price gouging baby faced Amazon transplants and turn my full attention to my true passion, whining about the audacity of homeless people existing within my line of sight on the internet, said local land landlord Barry Lankford. Word from next door is that someone's cousin's brother's wife in Sacramento personally saw a 200 person caravan of soot smeared homeless people, all foaming at the mouth, piling into a boxcar with tents and bindles in tow, heading north to Seattle, leaving a trail of needles and property value destruction in their wake. Man, I better get some security cameras so I can get some good content for my Facebook page. While most landlords around the country will soon have fresh new homeless people to endlessly complain about starting this weekend, downtrodden Seattle landlords like Langford have their calendars encircled for September 30th when Washington State's moratorium ends. Look, it's my right to both suddenly jack up rents by $500 this fall and act like my lack of empathy, empathy has nothing to do with the subsequent surge in homelessness that I will blame on everyone but myself, Langford said. We need real solutions to the homelessness problem in this city. It's time for all hands but mine on deck. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to compassionately get back to posting public po photos of homeless people in their most vulnerable and desperate moments without their consent or well-being in mind at all. Lankford said he also plans to, to focus his complaints on a rise in homeless people struggling with mental health issues while complaining even louder about any effort to fund resources for them. Could we appropriate next door? Hmm. Yes, this is satire. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's the difference between uh, between rent forgiveness, rent moratorium, and a rent freeze? Okay? I will explain. Okay? A rent moratorium is essentially or sorry, I should say an eviction moratorium, is basically you still need to pay your rent. You're still legally required to pay your rent. However, you cannot be evicted until the moratorium is over. Okay? So that's what it means. A moratorium, basically you go, you're going in debt to your landlord, and then they can evict you once the moratorium's over, but they have to wait until the end of the moratorium. But you still owe rent. A rent freeze is when a city or a county or a state says you can't raise the rent at all for this period of time. So once again, a rent freeze means you still owe rent, but your landlord can't increase your rent. You can't increase the cost of rent under rent freeze. Finally, rent cancellation or rent forgiveness is when the government says, Okay, people cannot pay their rent. We are going to, uh, by one mean or another, whether the government pays for it or whether they just say you're not legally required to pay it, they let you go free. Now, um, as you know, um, we don't do rent forgiveness here in America. It's not happening. What we have had is an eviction moratorium in multiple places, okay? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Vorbuddy says they can still evict you for reasons beyond non-payment. So landlords have been using every dirty trick in the book to find other reasons to kick people out. Yes, that is true. Vorbuddy, that is very true and a good point. 
That doesn't mean they can't do any evictions. It just means they can't do payment related evictions. They can find other ways like minor violations that technically allow them to um to evict you. But see, there's a problem with that. And 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 this is where we're going to get this is why I call it the eviction apocalypse, okay? This is where it's going to get very very interesting. So, let me just bring up another little article here, okay? Um because this is the sort of thing that will, uh, that just sort of is, it's very, um, we haven't talked about Cory Bush. We're about to, we're going to talk about Cory Bush. Don't you worry. Are we going to learn some eviction defense today? I'm going to give you some resources. Yes. Okay. All right. But first, this is something I want us to read as context. Okay. COVID-19 vaccine required for all New Orleans deputy constables ahead of heavy eviction workload. This was published yesterday. Okay? No, today. This was published today. So, I want you to recognize that this is the exact sort of thing that we're talking about. The police departments are ready to vaccinate, which is unbelievably hypocritical and stupid. Yes, a ne real neoliberal moment. But this is a local news from New Orleans. Deputies with the first and second city courts of New Orleans will be required to get a coronavirus vaccination. Constable Edwin M. Shorty Jr. has mandated all commissioned deputies must be vaccinated as COVID-19 case counts are rising with the spread of the Delta variant. All full-time and reserve deputies must meet this vaccination mandate by August 16th. Officials said a vaccination rates among law enforcement entities are high, but it has not been yet made man uh, mandate. The mandate will ensure SCC de deputies are not leaving the public at risk when performing duties of the department and ensuring their personal safety, according to the constable. Shorty ex says he expects the courts to be at full capacity in the coming weeks. They are not out of the woods of the pandemic, and they will make sure all CDC guidelines are followed in addition to the mandatory vaccination decision. The second city court handles eviction cases for Algiers and West Bank of Orleans Parish. This decision comes after the federal eviction moratorium expired over the weekend. Okay. They're mandating it because they have to enforce mass evictions. Yes, because most sta many states in the United States do not have an eviction moratorium. And now that the federal eviction moratorium is officially donezo, there is no more federal protection. Evictions are going to start happening. And there's a lot to say about this, okay? There's a fucking lot to say about this. Now you all, by the way, now you all know why the fuck I, I, I picked up, why I started smoking again. And why I, I have, I've, I've still stopped. But now you all know. Now you all have an idea. Because I've been shouting about this for a fucking long time. And we've been able to kick the can down the road. But we reached the end now. Is it weak of me to dip during this segment? It's making my heart race? Nope. You, you watch at your own comfort. I cover some hard stuff sometimes. You got to do what you got to do. <sighs> so. A lot of people are, uh, a lot of people are going to be facing eviction. Now, do we all remember, uh, let's see, let's see if we can get this real quick. Let's take a look if I can get the numbers on it. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get, let's get one from external to the U.S. Al Jazeera. Millions across the U.S. at risk of eviction as coronavirus surges. 
Millions of people across the United States could be forced out of their homes after a, a nationwide moratorium on evictions expired midnight on Saturday amid a spike of coronavirus in inspections. The, exp the expiration was a blow to President Joe Biden, who on Thursday made a last-ditch request to Congress to extend the 11-month ban on removals after a recent Supreme Court ruling meant the White House could not do so. So this is really wild, okay? This is really wild to recognize. And we're going to talk about this aspect of it too, which is that everybody is pointing the finger at everyone else. Everyone is is pointing the finger at everyone else. Uh, the Biden White House is pointing at the um, at the the courts and the the uh, and the Congress. The Congress is pointing fingers at the Republicans. The Republicans don't give a shit, so they don't need to blame anybody. They're blaming communism for this ever being a problem. They're blaming China. A lot of people are going to be are going to suffer from this. A lot of people are going to die from this. That is just a simple fact. Re Republicans balked at Demo Democratic Party efforts to extend the ban through October 18th. That's all they were going to give you. They were going to give everybody until October 18th. And remember, remember, I want you to listen. That this is an eviction moratorium, not rent forgiveness. So even if we kick the can down to October, everybody who's at risk of eviction right now would still be in debt to their landlords. This is why. This is the problem. There is a huge problem, which means no matter how far you kick the can, no one is coming out of the pit. Everybody's in debt to their landlords. You could extend it by a year and people still wouldn't be able to do it. There's no way people will be able to get out of debt to landlords. Americans don't have savings. Americans can barely make it. The moratorium was first put in place by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention in September of 2020 to combat the spread of COVID-19 and prevent homelessness during the pandemic. Congress approved nearly $47 billion in federal housing aid to the states during the pandemic, but it has been slow to make it into the hands of renters and landlords who are owed payments. This is what I'm saying. This money hasn't ended up alleviating the renters. With moratorium's expiration, more than 3.6 million Americans are now at risk of eviction, according to the Associated Press News Agency, some within a matter of days. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren said on Saturday that in every state in this country, families are sitting around their kitchen table right now trying to figure out how to survive a devastating, disruptive, and unnecessary eviction. It is 1 a.m. Cori Bush has, for those who don't know, Cori Bush has been living outside of the Capitol in a tent. For those who don't know, as a sign of protest. It's an eviction emergency. Reconvene the house. Oh, only a sleeping bag. Okay, so she's only been sleeping in a sleeping bag. I thought she had a tent. Cori Bush is fairly based, yes. We've been outside of the Capitol since last night demanding that our Democratic-controlled government take action to save millions from eviction. We have until midnight. Thank you, Elizabeth Warren, for supporting our push on the Senate floor and joining us outside. Let's keep pushing. I'm calling on the president to extend the eviction moratorium. I'm calling on Speaker Pelosi to reconvene the House. I'm calling on Senator Schumer to extend the victim eviction moratorium in the Senate. But I want to say something real quick, okay? I want to I want to tell you something. We're not getting the eviction extension. And even if we did, it wasn't enough. It wouldn't be enough because of the debt. Because there are so many Americans in debt to their landlords. What, what the Democrats are desperately fighting for is a half measure that's, that will not save people. They are, it's like, it's like if you were to say, it's like if you were to take, imagine if you were trying to sew a wound shut, yeah? 
and all you had was one piece of floss and you just laid the piece of floss over the wound. That's that's what's happening. It's not even close. It would it, it doesn't even help even if they succeed. All that the eviction moratorium will do is kick the can. Yes, it will buy people time in their houses, which is good. That is a good thing. It it is unequivocally good if people can stay in their houses. But nonetheless, it just changes the date for which they are going to be kicked onto the street. Yes, and the landlords are really pushing rental assistance, which is fucking sad considering that two months of rent can be damn near five grand. Yep. It, this isn't just late stage capitalism. This is unironically, like, this is unironically collapse shit. Do we know what's going to happen to those people? Are they going to live in the streets now? Yes. Yes, they will. So, this is the sort of thing. S Satanarchy says, this is, the is this the domino effect of COVID rolling into climate change? If so, do we even have time to prepare? Uh, that is a very interesting question. Do we have time to prepare? N as a society, nope. We've already failed. As a society, we've already failed. As individuals and small communities, we do. There is time. Yes, there is time to adapt and there is time to prepare. This may cause accelerationism from the left to occur, which everyone knows is really bad. Hold on a second, hold on a second. This isn't just accelerationism from the left. It is accelerating. This isn't accelerationism. This is, it is accelerating. You understand? Listen to me. That is not, this isn't accelerationism. This is, it is accelerating. We, the gas has been the, the a brick, a cinder block has been put on the gas pedal. We've already, so in my, let me tell you a quick story. In my state, Washington, we have had a state of emergency declared for homelessness for some time now. For some time. That's how bad it is. It's so bad that the state has had to declare a state of emergency for homelessness in my state. Now, we still have an eviction moratorium. Are all these people just doomed to be impoverished? Yep. Essentially, yes. Essentially, yes. Do you think unions are able to help organize workers across this collapse? Some. What can we do personally? Good question. Yep, this is another one. Yeah, here we go. This is a really good one. Let's take a look at this real quick. We're going to talk about that in just a second, THCCS. Don't, don't worry. But first, let's look at this. This is a visualization of of the change in rents. This is was pulled from apartmentlist.com. And this it represents monthly price change in each of the 100 largest US cities, 2018 through present. If you will notice, on 2021, almost every city in the United States is in the far red range. This is, yep, this is mass wealth transfer easily visualized. This is right here. What you are witnessing here is the great fucking <laughs> I drink your milkshake. You know that? That's what the landlords are doing to you right now. That is what the landlords are fucking doing for you right now. When I was in Seattle a few weeks ago, I saw something that summed up how America is going pretty well. I saw a new Mercedes parked next to a tent near the ferry. It made me extremely sad. That's something we're going to see. So let me talk about some of the things that we're going to inevitably see, okay? Here we go, okay? We are going to see a lot of people who thought that they were fine no longer doing fine. You all are likely going to have family members and friends come to you out of seemingly out of nowhere asking you for money asking you for help because the thing is about america is that americans don't talk about their problems by and large on a on a large level they do not talk about their problems until it is so bad that there's nothing else they can do A lot of people have cars because cars are cheaper than housing right now. So a lot of people are going to lose their housing and start living in their car. Yeah, Dylan's got the right idea. 
Dylan's got the right idea. Dylan has the right idea. Farmers arrest the sheriff who is attempting to evict a woman from her farm on behalf of an insurance company. Michigan, 1952. Yep. So, let me continue. You are going to see people in your apartment building getting evicted. You are going to see empty units. You are going to see... Uh, you are going to see more conflicts with the police. You are going to see more police in your neighborhood. Unless you live in a gated neighborhood and live a very privileged life, you will see more police in your neighborhood. It's hard to find an RV because people resort that for, for housing. Well, RVs are expensive and they, 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 RVs are very expensive and they degrade in value faster than almost anything that you can own. So you have to be very careful with them. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about a couple of things that are going on right now that are all intersecting, okay? So we've got, um, we've got uh, increased vagrancy, uh, pu increased punishment for vag vagrancy all over the United States. Increased punishments for, uh, for, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, loitering all over the United States. Um, we are, we, we no longer have federal eviction protections, which means a huge amount of people in the United States no longer have, uh, will, will soon be getting evicted. We have almost no support and money available for homeless people in the United States. Homeless people in the United States already suffer really, really bad, and we have a fucking lot of it, okay? Food stamps are going to go down, so people will be hungry. And COVID is spiking back up. We have experienced uh, historical heat waves this summer, and winter is going to come. These are a lot of intersecting issues. Okay? And on top of all of this... I want you all to listen to me, my lovely imps. I want you to listen to me. On top of all of this, the government is not fucking helping you. Vermin says, Vosh and I went to a dispensary the other day, and no joke, they had a sign by the ID guy that said, due to increased armed robberies in Seattle, we need to take added precautions and wouldn't let us in without recording our faces and open the thick glass door with a code. This was a first. Yes. Do you want to know what else, Vermin Hands? Do you want to know what else has been going on lately? all over Seattle, in fact, all over the United States. You want to know what's been going on all over the United States? Catalytic converter thefts. It takes, it's very, very quick to, to steal someone's catalytic converter. And so there is a epidemic of catalytic converter, converter th thievery because people are desperate. A catalytic, a catalytic converter is an expensive car, uh, car part. Sorry, I should have explained that. A catalytic com converter is an expensive car part that most cars have. It's literally the second reaction. It's literally, it's literally the second result. Look, when you go here, look. Catalytic converter thefts, 11 hours ago. Catalytic converter thefts. Uh, catalytic converter thefts, thefts, all over. This is New York, Texas, and Los Angeles. All over the place. That, look at it. it! Everybody's talking about it! Catalytic converter, catalytic converter, catalytic converter! Catalytic converter! It's that bad. It is an epidemic. Is there any way to protect it from theft? Yep, there's a $400 uh, protector you can put on it. They help make exhaust cleaner, yes. Yes. Oh god, catalytic converters are the only thing stopping cars from putting out pure carbon monoxide? Yep. It, it contains platinum. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a lot of things that are all collapsing in on us right now. Okay? That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff to talk about. All these car parts being stolen as people are going to live in their cars. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way to help? Yes. There are, is always a way to help there are always ways to help 
okay? So we're going to talk about a couple of ways. We're going to talk about a few ways um, to, with, with, with which you can, you can help, okay? First of all, let's talk, okay? We're going to talk. In fact, I'm going to do, I'm going to type up a little document for this because that will be fun. We like typing up documents, don't we? Let's do a little document type up, huh? Here we go. Excellent. Okay. I am not going to do super, super, super um, tight uh, categorizations here, okay? So this is, I'm not going to put income levels. We're just going to put like broad buckets that you, of what you can do. So if you are rich, and what I mean is rich is have your own house, stable income, or, uh, or, or trust fund or anything like that. Something that's not going to go away, even if there's hardship. Okay. Most likely. Okay. If you are rich, you have your own house, stable income, and trust fund. Here's what you can do. You can, of course, donate directly to people in need. There are GoFundMes all over the place. I, re I retweet them frequently. Um, there are a, There's a ton of, of ways that you can do this just passively by listening and being willing to give. You see one? Donate to it. If you have the money, you could change somebody's life. You can even go just browse GoFundMe if you want to. Okay? So that's the first way that you can do it. Two, directly alleviate the hardships of family and or friends. Okay? So if you're very rich, you have your own house you have stable income or a trust fund or whatever, okay? If you have those things, then what you can do is if you have a family member who is in hardship, you can fix the problem immediately. You can pay for their rent for a for until they need it, until they're done. You can buy them a house if you're that rich. You can buy a house and let them stay in it. You can, if you have a big enough house, give them a room to stay in as long as they need it. The thing is that people need stabilizing levels of help during this. So it's not just about, you know, temporary. If, I mean, obviously temporary can help. But if you are rich, you have extra. You can do this. You're allowed to do this. There's nothing stopping you from doing any of this. Three. Coordinate directly with with local or wait is this only a preview? Oh damn! Here we'll do this nature one next. Coordinate directly with local or with local uh, mutual aid and other direct relief charities. Now. You'll notice that I've, I've put directly, directly, directly. You're going to see me talking about directly a lot because the thing is that giving to, um, giving money away to big institutional charities right now can be helpful. It is not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing. But the thing is, is that it will take time and this is a matter, an essence of time. There are a lot of people who are out of their house now, who are out of food now. So there's nothing wrong with giving to those organizations, but national organizations probably aren't the best option. Yes, I agree. You should focus on local and regional things, okay? All right. So here we go. Are you ready? This is the next level. Safe, but not well off, okay? This is the category that I think most people are going to fall into, okay? You have no real risk of becoming housing uh, endangered. Uh, your housing is not in any severe risk of being endangered. And you probably have at least some income that's taking care of you. You are afloat, 
you are not you are not in the poverty cycle yet okay this is where most people probably here are going to fall okay okay so if you are safe but well off but not well off okay there's a number of things you can do one volunteer with local food pantries and mutual aid organizations oh yeah i forgot to add if you're in the rich category and you have lots of time organize or set up mutual aid orgs in your area i forgot about that one if you have lots of time and money you can be the one who starts the organization if you're lucky enough to have that space and time you can start setting it up and then other people could come to you and it will become a lot easier okay so if you are safe but not well off volunteer with local food pantries and mutual aid organizations this is something i have done in the past i've told you all the stories about delivering food uh you can do it at your own discretion when you have free time it's usually very low and not intrusive takes a couple hours out of one day of the week or two days of the week and you can go actually immediately help people and a local food pantry is very much the same way local food banks are have been so overworked for the past two or three years it is it is incredible they need the extra help they need the hand and you can if you're in the situation where you don't necessarily have a lot of money but you might have a little extra time and energy you can do that okay yeah if you have a lot of time put your time towards things like that if you have a lot of time put your time towards communication uh research if you have time here's the next thing two this is if you have time help organize and spread the word so what you can do is if you are if you have lots of time on your hands you can write emails you can post posters you can hand out leaflets you can uh, uh research orgs within your area and make available lists of them you can even use our discord for that if you have a regional listing uh of of mutual aid organizations that are good Post it in our fucking Discord in a nice organized format. If you've got the time to do that, you can do that. Almost every local area has stuff like that. The thing is that many people don't know they exist. One of the problems we have in America is that people don't know that their local mutual aid organizations even exist. Vermin says, it feels nice to be able to support those close to us when they need funds. We always buy our friends like computers, rent, or doctor stuff whenever they need, but I don't want to do more on the ground because I'm still scared with COVID. It's spiking again right now as I was feeling comfortable enough to go out and work. Vermin, that's awesome though. You're doing your part. You're doing what you can and that's fucking awesome because I can tell you that those little things can, can be the difference between somebody ending up on the street. But the thing is, is that we're in a position where even more people are going to be having that need. The need is rising. So as long as people are there to meet it, I want to get as many people involved as possible. And that is fucking pog, though. We should always celebrate the things that we do do. That's super fucking based. And, and here's the thing. Not everyone is, like, going to be in the position where they can immediately drop everything and go out and do, um, and do, like, IRL stuff. Um, well, sometimes it's, uh, Vermin, it is, it can be a little bit of bias, but at the same time, um, but at the same time, it's also harder to know how to help a stranger because you don't know them. When you know somebody, when you get to know somebody, you get to know their issues, the things they might need help with, whereas a stranger might not, you know, so it is, it is a bias, but it's also just sort of something that happens. The more people you know, the more people that you're aware of what they're dealing with. 
it can be hard. But that's why tools like mutual aid groups are super helpful. On my mutual aid group, it was all no contact. Everything was done no contact. It was all done through the internet. You just, you would get a, uh, they would say, okay, where can you deliver to? And I would say, I can deliver to this town, this town, this town, and this town. Then they would give me somebody who needs a delivery in that town. We'd go pick up the groceries and then we'd leave. And we'd leave the groceries at their door and text them and let them know. And then it was done. And then they would send it. There's all kinds of mutual aid groups, but there's been a lot of them that have, that have started up. So there's, the, there's number two, okay? If you have time, you can do that. This is seriously something you can do. I'll post, uh, I'll may, um, maybe I'll post this to the, to the, to the Discord so that people can review it. Yeah. You want to, Vermin, something that happened in my town, right near where we lived, is that somebody had an empty lot, and they opened it up so that people could just live on the, on the lot. They opened up the lot. Now, it's not there anymore. I don't remember why. There was some legal thing that happened. But for a while, this person just had an empty lot, and they just mowed down the grass and let people set up their tents in there. And they set up a, a washing station and bathrooms and stuff like that on their own land. That's something you can do if you're super rich. You can actually build a, uh, a little facility or a campground or something like that. We will get there. Don't worry, Striped Kidder. We're going to get there. Not all of them need to be professionally written. That is happening in Eugene, Oregon. Yep, I imagine that. I don't know how to find local mutual aid. Search on Facebook. Search on Google. You have to just do the searching. Ask around. Uh, I know that this, this. sometimes it can be hard to know where to start, but no joke, there is, you might not believe this, but there is a fuckload of local organizing that happens on Facebook. There is a absolute fuckload. Facebook sounds boomer, but there are a ton that do because it's because Facebook has real names on it. But there are also cool things like this. Do you want to see one that I've donated to a whole bunch lately? Uh, let me show you something. Let me show you something super cool that I've donated to um, recently. I'll show you. Hold on. Uh, here we go. This is this group right here. Free Meal Program University District. This is just a Twitter account for a small charity, a small mutual aid one. They offer free delicious meals every Monday from 5 to 7 p.m. at University Heights neighborhood in Seattle across from the Safeway. And look at them. Look at what they pull off. They just literally, they buy a whole bunch of, no, we're not on the Doomer arc. Are you fucking kidding me? This is the non-Doomer part. Fucking listen. Listen. Look, they just buy food and then they put a bunch of it together and they hand it out to people who need it. No, they don't have to be a formal organization. This is not a formal organization. This is just some people doing that. this. Look at this shit. And they post all of it. And you can just Venmo them money. I do. We'll get there. We'll get there, THCCS. 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 God damn, that name is challenging. Vermin hands. I've always wanted to do, like, trash pickup around houseless areas or get them trash cans because I hate that they have to live outside and also in place the city refuses to attend to or clean. Maybe I can think about starting up something like that with local vaccinated comrades. That would be something really cool. That would be something that you could do that wouldn't require a whole lot of social engagement, but would nonetheless make the world better. I'm not the richest person in the world, but one thing I try to do is buy a few $5 to $10 McDonald's or Subway gift cards when I can. I know people feel iffy when giving homeless people money, so this is a way to give them something that can fulfill a need. Maybe this is something others can do. That is something others can do. So... I personally, I carry a couple of, I try to keep a little bit of cash in my car. Like, I mean, small, like not a lot, nothing that would, that would be, that would kill me if the car, like nobody's going to break into my car to, to ga gra grab the three or four bucks I have in there. And so I, I do that. But another thing that you can do if you don't like giving out, um, if you don't like giving out, uh, cash, uh, you can do the gift cards like, uh, Big Orange Jew recommended. 
That's a really, really good thing you can do. You can just go buy a couple of gift cards, keep them with you, and if you see somebody asking for, you know, panhandling or begging or whatever, you can give them. So that's another thing we'll put on the list, okay? We're going to put that on the list. Here we go. Three, give small, wait here, give small amounts via gift cards or cash directly to those in need. That's another thing that you can do. Pocket change, extra, few extra bucks here and there really does make a difference. Another thing that you can do when you're in the category of safe but not necessarily well off is you can donate things you're not using anymore. Now, there's two ways you can do this. So, you can do this either to organizations like food uh like uh food pantries and stuff like that. Now, here's what I would recommend. Oh, that's a really good idea, Queen Laura. Yeah, I forgot about that. A good idea is a gift card to truck stops. Um truck stop gift cards can be used for hot showers. Yep, truck stops like Loves or anything like that. If you have a gift card for one of those, they can use it to get a hot shower. Is Goodwill a reliable organization? Okay, Goodwill is fine, but the problem is that Goodwill, Goodwill is about employment. Goodwill does, like, Goodwill sells some cheap things, but keep in mind that they're still selling things. They don't give them away. The, the purpose of Goodwill is to provide employment for the, for the, for the people who work there. I know people who keep aid packages in their car. Plastic bags with soap, towels, first aid stuff, snacks, baby wipes, toothpaste. Yes, this is a really good one. I'm going to put yours recommended in here. This is another one that you can do at any level. We're going to put this under number five, which is recommended by Lava Monster. So here's the thing. Here's what I'm trying to tell you real quick. Uh, th, uh, th, Theseus, Theseus, uh, Theseus, does it matter where you do, where you help, uh, out or organize? Like religious versus secular charities? There, um, obviously there are some charities that suck. I don't care. Honestly, what I care about is people living now. So if you have a good church near you, go for it. Just do it. What about us in rural areas? We're going to get there. P patience, patience real quick. Okay. Patience. Okay. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay. So, where were we? Truck stop gift cards can be used for hot showers. Uh, restaurant gift, sh gift cards can be used for food. Walmart gift cards can be used for medicine and other needs. So these are all things that you can do. Now I want to point out another thing here, okay? Look, donate what you are not using. And there are three ways you can do this. To friends and family. Recently, I just gave a fellow streamer a piece of equipment, an expensive piece of equipment that I was no longer using. That streamer is, uh, is, is, is likely going to get a lot of use out of it. This is, I'm not trying to like buff myself up. I'm just saying these are things that we can do. If you have a friend who is in need of something, give them something you're not using. There's no need to hoard all this crap. It's better that someone be using it. And you might save their life. You probably could, Cotton D Pad. Secondly, donate directly to individuals in need. If you see somebody on the side of the road who's who is in trouble, you can ask them, do you need shirts? Do you need hygiene uh, things that you have extras of? Do you need uh, shoes if you have extra shoes? Do you have whatever you have that's extra? You can give those to people that you see, okay? And you can also give it to other orgs directly. Here's a thing that I want you all to listen to real quick because I know a lot of you fall into this category right here of the safe but not well off, okay? Listen. 
instead of giving to Goodwill, give directly to food. Give directly to food pantries, okay? Food pantries, food banks, etc. Yes, even religious ones, okay? Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a personal story, okay? I'm going to tell you a personal story from my life. When we lived in California, we were dreadfully poor, okay? I mean, like, we had nothing. And when we went to a food pantry to get food aid from a food bank, they had clothes, books, shoes, and, and cooking equipment there. And the thing is, they don't charge for those things. Thrift stores sell the stuff that you give them. Sometimes they do it for a good cause, but it's not the type of thing that we're looking for in this current time. Goodwill will get plenty of stuff. They get plenty of stuff. If you want to help, give your old stuff that you're not using, the stuff you're sitting on, to a food pantry or a food bank. Okay? And here's another one. And then, of course, Lava Monster has given us another idea for safe but not well-off people. Um, Salvation Army isn't a food pantry. Sal Salvation Army Salvation Army is like a mixed charity and sales thing. You don't want to give to them. You want to give to food to actual food pantries. There are tons of them. All you need to do to find lo your local food pantries is just search it on Google. Is there any charity or, or group we shouldn't support and watch out for? Yeah, Salvation Army. Fuck Salvation Army. They're bad. Salvation Army is bad. Do not help them. And they don't do, they don't, they don't help directly like that. So yes. As was said by Lava Monster, I know people who keep aid packages in their car. Small plastic bags with soap, towels, first aid stuff, snacks, baby wipes, toothpaste, feminine hygiene products. Etc. Usually homeless people are stoked to get stuff like that. Yes, they are. Those are really good. This is something that is cheap to do. You can go to a dollar store and get a whole bunch of these. Okay? And you could just keep these in your car and give them away when you see somebody in need. And that could change somebody's life. Okay? Okay. Finally, the last segment. Well, there's two more that we need to do. Um, okay. I know how to sew clothes. Is that a skill that something that I can use specifically? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. That is so valuable. You have no idea. Okay. There are, uh, now this is just an example of something that you could do. You'll have to think for yourself and have to search a little bit and do some research. But in my local area, there is a, uh, a, a immigrant community center that repairs clothes on certain days of the week. So people can bring their clothes in and then there will be volunteers who will repair the clothes in the immigrant community center. Seriously, you could teach people. Yes, teaching people would be great. Okay, fine. Menstrual products. Jesus Christ, you people. Fucking always missing the forest for the trees. This is why. See? It's fucking... Ugh. Okay. In danger or unstable. Okay. Okay. If you are in a position of... Yes, yes, yes. That's another one. Ryoma, what about offering your skills like some st hairstylists sometimes give haircuts to the homeless for free? That's another one. I should put that under here first before we go down. Six. Donate skills. Repair uh, haircuts. Tons of organizations do that. Foraging, sewing, etc. What about teaching people how to find edible plants without getting sick or poisoned? That can be very helpful.
our local um our our local um one of our local our local LGBT center every single month does free haircuts. Yeah, they're very helpful. They're very very helpful. They can be very very helpful. And there's not a lot of places that do that, but you could do it. Okay? Now, now we move on to the next one, okay? If you're in danger or unstable, okay? Here we go. One. This is what you're supposed to do uh, okay, if you're in danger or unstable, reach out to others. Do not die. This is is rule number one, okay? Rule number one, if you are in danger or in unstable, you have to prioritize stabilizing yourself and yours, okay? That is what you have to do before anything else. That doesn't mean you can't also help or that there aren't mutual ways of doing this, but that is number one. You do not die. You must talk to other people. Don't be afraid to ask for help, okay? Seriously. Don't be afraid to ask for fucking help. Okay. So. Reach out, okay? Personally speaking, I'm too scared. I feel like I'm not in a bad enough condition to seek help, as if I'm taking from others. Listen, you're not taking from other people if you're expressing a need or something that will help you become more stable and happy. We have to learn to work together. What can we say, uh, Ryoma asks, what can we say to our friends and relatives who are contemptuous to the homeless? I have a lot of people in my life who think all homeless folks are violent drug addicts who are homeless by choice. Remind them that every person is one or two missed paychecks away from being homeless themselves. Remind them it could be them someday and that they should have compassion because there are lots of ways that people become homeless. Homelessness is higher than ever. It is not just addicts. Even we don't need you don't need to argue them on the addict thing because that's a big discussion, but it's not just addicts who are homeless. So, okay, so this is the first thing. If you are in danger or unstable in your financial situation, unstable financially, we should say, financially, housing, otherwise. There we go. Thank you very much, Cotton D-Pad. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I truly, truly want you to understand, you must learn to ask for help, okay? Do you understand that? We must all learn this. This is not the era for pride, okay? This is not the fucking era to be prideful. Swallow your pride. Surviving is more important than your pride. Learn to talk. And guess what? If somebody doesn't off, if somebody can't help you, okay. If, if, uh, if, if, if they can't help you, all right, ask somebody else. I know rejection can be hard to tolerate. I know firsthand I have ADHD, uh, um, uh, rejection sensitive dysphoria is a very real thing, but you have to learn to push through it. Okay. It is not the time for pride. Okay? Learn to ask for help. Secondly, cooperate. Do not die alone. Work together. If you have a friend who is struggling in their own way, find ways that you can work together to make things easier. For example, if you have a car, but your friend who lives near you doesn't, Offer to give them a fucking ride. Start carpooling. Save ye each other money. Okay? Seriously. Learn to cooperate with one another. And and you're not a nuisance. No, everyone, we're, we're social creatures. We're social creatures. We have to overcome it or else you will die alone. Okay? No, no man is an island. No woman is an island. No NB is an island. Indeed. We can't live our lives in fear of our needs and our desires. Okay? We can't. 
This is what I'm talking about, though. This is what I'm talking about right here. Cotton D-Pad says, I have a friend that was homeless in the United States for a while that didn't want to give even a single hint that they were homeless. They tried to hide even from me. Just ask for help. Reach out. Yes. We have a huge problem with this in our country. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Is now the time to attempt to get out of emotionally damaging situations given the eviction crisis? Um, yeah. This is better than waiting. It is... It seize the fucking day. Yes. Yep, you have to keep pushing through, Pain-sama. I know it sucks, but you have to keep pushing through. Cooperate. Do not allow yourself... You... Allow you and your... Yours to suffer alone. I cannot tell you how many times I've been able to cooperate with friends of mine to save my own ass and their ass, okay? You can help each other, okay? Ask for help, but it's best to rely on little- on as little people as possible so you don't get betrayed. Well, what are you fucking- wait, what are you fucking depending on people for? We're talking about how to help each other survive. We're not talking about, like- We're not talking about, like- Like, building a- a-, a like a- like a marriage with somebody. We're talking about give each other rides. Fucking help each other out. In danger or unstable financially, okay? I know they are trauma-brained about asking for assistance. But we have to change the world, and that means we have to challenge it. If someone's helping you survive, you have to depend on them, even if for a little while. Well, yeah, but that's true about everything. That's just a fact of reality. That's, that's, that's just how reality is. We rely on each other all the time. Yeah, sometimes we can hurt each other. That's a reason for us to be kinder. It puts them in a position of power over you and can possibly lead to abuse. Yes! Yes! Yes. However! 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 That is always true. This is a separate- this is- that is a separate issue. That is a separate issue. Okay? Cotton D-Pad says, In general, I think we should take this opportunity to change our mindset. We're still influenced by the expectation of giving to receive. While it's much more healthy for society to be able to give without the expectation of receiving something in exchange, and asking for what we need without the expectation of giving something back in the moment. Yes. Or, or go the pathologic route. And, and, uh, the pathologic route, which is that you give something regardless of its value, every time that something is given to you, but it doesn't necessarily have to be of the same value. It is could be something as small as a token of your appreciation. It can be something as small as a note that says you're thankful. That's it. Those are both great ways of doing things. Yep, subverting the meaning of giving back. Yes. Listen. You want to you want to hear a story of an example of this? You want to hear an example of this? When I was in need, um my friend without question gave me a place to stay. And so I put it in my mind that when I had the opportunity to help that friend that I would do so. I didn't pay them anything. They just helped me. Two years later, I was in a position, by pure chance, to get that friend and that friend's wife a job. And I did. There you go. Bam. And so, the debt was settled. But it wasn't even a debt. It's just, hey, you help me, I'm in a position to help you now. That's called solidarity, yeah, I agree. Mm hmm Yes, mutual aid. Favors owed, not out of- not of because of an obligation to debt, but, he, but it's because of what we do for each other. Excuse me. Part of the reason that I have structured the Discord 
the way that it is is so that people can actually meet each other and safely start to build connections with one another, okay? Vermin says, something people often don't think about is that sometimes you need to be the one to offer the hand first. Others are just as scared of being burdens as you are. Being kind first opens up a world of possibilities for, f for help, friendship, and genuine care. I 100% agree. How many romances have stemmed from the Discord? A lot. A lot have. And I I'm happy with that. I'm happy, and I hope that my mods are happy as well. Vermin says, sometimes I'm like, nobody helps, nobody cares to help me. And then I realize I've been a closed off cunt, and the moment that I open back up, I receive it tenfold, and I'm like, oh yeah, oops, it happens to me too. Walter L. says, I cleaned my apartment, and during that, I came to the conclusion that capitalism prevents us from asking for help. We're basically being taught to see it as buying a service, not as friends just helping one another. Boom! Fucking big brain moment, Walter L. Yes! You are being trained to be a consumer. That we buy everything from everyone else. Because guess what? If they train you to buy everything, then you will keep buying things. And the people who take a bit of all of it will... Keep making money. See, it's funny if you take a little slice off the top. Yeah, relationships. Think about it. Dating has been commodified. Fucking cooking has been commodified. Socializing has been commodified. The Yes, the alienation is a feature, not a bug. And we have to actively resist it by doing things like helping each other. By engaging in ways that we are being told not to because it's inconvenient for those on the top. Isn't streaming a form of commodification of social relationship? Yes, it is. Vuvuzela iPhone. Yes, it is. Of course it is. But there are ways to do it better and there are ways not to. Radio is also a way of commodifying, uh, of commodifying social interaction. And there are better ways to use radio and worse ways to use radio. Friendship is powerful. Okay, it really is. Uh, Vorbuddy says, I was looking for housing last month, and one of the new apartment listing services has a Tinder-style swiping option for open apartment listings. I lost my fucking mind. Yes, swiping is what was missing in the right renting process. Oh, God. That's like the apification of the world. That is so painful. Oh, my God. That's painful. Okay. Let us continue. Here we go. Is apification the next level of commodifying? It is just a part of the commodification process. It really is. Okay, here we go. In danger or unstable financially, housing or otherwise. Reach out to others, do not die. Cooperate, do not allow yours and you and yours to suffer alone. Get roommates. Communicate with your roommates. Roommates to accommodate your needs. All of each of your needs. This is important. A lot of people do not do this. A lot of people do not do that. A lot of people will sit in silence and live in bad and in bad roommate situations when they should communicate with their roommates what each of them need and then not step on each other's toes so they can coexist nicely. You can actually live in really, really, really chill uh, roommate situations if you're not, uh, if you're not, uh, if you're, if you're cool about it. It's like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, multi-generational houses and multi-family houses are going to become incredibly common. I'm telling you this right now. You can mark my words. You can come back and tell me, okay? If I'm wrong, okay? You can, you can come back. You can In the future, you can come tell me I'm wrong, but I'm telling you right now, there are going to be a lot of people living with their friends and family in the coming years. Like a lot Well, Craigslist probably isn't the best place to look for roommates. You might need to use your social networks. Facebook seems to be pretty good. Are we seeing the Great Depression in slow-mo right now? No, we're seeing the Great Depression in fucking fast-mo. Are you kidding me? Like, fucking last I- the, the last time we covered the housing crisis in America, like, close to somewhere around 30% of America was in danger of eviction. And now it's going away. Okay. 
we're gonna go to we're gonna do one more here okay if you're in danger or unstable financially housing or otherwise connect 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 okay bit connect but no actually connect you understand connect take a day and research the shit that's in your area okay i'm serious look up what local mutual aid orgs there are look up what resources exist look at what good churches you might have in your area look at look just take the time to do the research so you know what is there please those of you who are in this position find the groups before you need them who knows you might not even need them but you might be able to tell somebody else who does need them okay this is so fucking important Take the time to do the research. Make a little notebook with local resources. Make a, a, a bookmark folder in your, in your fucking browser with local resources. Okay? Tenants unions is a huge one. Let's look up these. Tenants unions. Tenants unions will help you if you're getting evicted. Uh, state bar. State bar associations for lawyers and also law schools. Law schools usually offer legal aid for cheap or for free. Did you know that? That's super good. Here's another thing. LGBT centers in your area, both on, uh, in, on colleges, at colleges, and independent. These are super helpful. I've talked about these a million, million times. Find the phone number, find out what they offer, know what's available to you, okay? Next, here's another one. Are you ready? Mutual aid and buy swap trade groups. These are all on face, mostly on Facebook, okay? Listen. Mutual aid groups on Facebook and buy swap trade groups are all the fuck over the place. The the buy swap trade um groups are I've gotten one of my monitors I got from a buy swap trade group. One of my the 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 the, the tank that my that my last remaining rat has retired into, I got from a buy swap trade group. Instagram works as well. Well, we're we're in an extended uh portion, Grimble Grumble. Oh, we got a we have a an Oh, look at that. House prices in the United States are 50% higher than in quarter 1 20, 2000. In Britain are 94% higher. How far back can we doom this? Want to see what year it was when I was born? House prices in the United States are 48% higher than in quarter one of 1990. Let's see, when did my parents buy their first house? Would have been like 93? 66% higher. 66% higher than when my parents uh, first bought. And in Britain, it's 164% higher for housing prices. Oh, you can do rent. House prices against rent. House prices in 15 in the United States are 15% overvalued against rent. House prices are rising rapidly in much of the rich world. House prices in the suburbs are outpacing those in the city. Rocky Mountain metros are growing despite the pandemic and because of it. Our house price forecast model expects that prices will soon peak. We'll see. Housing is at the root of many of the rich world's problems. Interesting. That's super, super interesting. This is The Economist. Here we go. Did I set 1993? Yeah, 1993 was around the time my parents bought their first house. Anyway. Yes. Three. Okay. Now we are in the last category, okay? This is for... Severely Endangered... Uh, minors and other okay okay let's listen okay this is the last thing 
This is this is the last category of people we're going to cover. This is people who are currently experiencing housing in um like housing threats if you're disabled and so you re and so you already have to rely on SSI or if you're a minor and you don't have much you can do, okay? We're going to break this down into subcategories actually. Actually, we're going to we're just going to break this down into subcategories. Okay? This is minors. This is what people who are minors should do in this situation. Okay? Listen. Focus on fucking school, okay? I'm not kidding you, okay? I'm not kidding you, okay? School is more important than you think. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's fucking horrible. I know. I talk about how bad school is all the time, but what I'm trying to tell you, but what I'm trying to fucking tell you is that you need to do well in school. And I don't mean just grades, okay? I mean, you need to learn as much as you fucking can with the resources that you have while you're in school. If you have a teacher that's super helpful, learn from them. If you have classes that are particularly useful, listen. If you have opportunities through your school to do, um, to do things like volunteering, do them, okay? School is actually pretty fucking useful, okay? There you go. I know that school can be very hard. I'm not trying to tell you that you need to love school, but being able to complete school will give you a big advantage. I'm serious. It will give you a big ex a big advantage. And here's the thing. If you're struggling in a class, don't be afraid to just f tell your teacher, not literally, don't actually tell your teacher to fuck off, but to learn online, okay? You can learn through Khan Academy, okay? Stuff like that is super helpful. You can self-teach and then you'll be able to pass your classes without having to be bound to the teacher if you have a bad teacher, okay? There was a whole lot of stuff in school that I just learned on my own before I even took classes because I was just interested in it, okay? Okay? Use what resources you have, okay? Also, volunteer if you have time and effort. If you have time and ability. Okay, listen. For minors, school is fucking useful. Make sure that you get your fucking schooling done. Volunteer. There are so many opportunities for students to volunteer. Okay? I'm serious. Volunteer organizations have all kinds of stuff. They will come to your school. All you have to do is say yes. Okay? All you have to do is be willing to actually do the volunteer. Okay? So please, that's a good opportunity for you if you have the time, it is so helpful. Here's another thing, okay? Don't lock yourself into the idea of college. College can be super awesome. College can be really valuable for some people, but some people would just prefer to go learn a, 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 a trade skill and you'll be, you can be very happy. We live in an era where you can learn lots of high level information online. It's okay for you to go to a trade school and still pursue other interests online. Seriously, you can go learn carpentry, plumbing, HVAC, electro, uh, um, uh, fucking electricianhood, whatever it's called, electrics, whatever it's fucking called. Um, yeah, people desperate need, desperately need electricians. Um, uh, 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 welding. Nursing. Uh, fucking, uh, aestheticians, okay? These are all, uh, uh, another one we just talked about. Pharmacy, okay? Forklift certifications. There is so goddamn many, okay? Okay, please, you do not, and keep in mind that if you go to trade school, it doesn't lock you out of learning other things. Yeah, pilot school, farming, chainsaw, forestry. There are so goddamn many things that you can go and do that they, and, and it takes less time, it costs less money, and it will give you skills that you can use, okay? So consider trade schools and more, okay? Next. Severely in danger 
financially in danger, okay? If you are here, you have, there is nothing you need to do, okay? All you need to do is do not die. And that means reach out to local organizations, get the help that you need by any means necessary, okay? If you are in this last category, do not worry about helping other people outside of mutual structures. So if you need to stay with somebody, stay with somebody. If you can work with somebody, like, I don't know, maybe you make a friend and then they take you onto a job and you work together, that's fine. But try to make sure that you get yourself safe first, okay? Please, seriously. I'm just trying to tell you if you are in a if you're in a place where you're financially in danger and you're severe or you're severely in danger, disabled or whatever, focus. It is okay to focus on yourself. It is okay to ask for help. It is okay to be the recipient of help. This is me telling you this right now. Remember what I said, do not die. Do not die means learning to accept help. Do you understand? Thank you. Do not die. Do not hesitate to accept help. Do not hesitate to ask for help. Do not isolate yourself. Okay? Don't do it. Do not. Okay? I miss doing the helping. I miss it so much. You'll get there. Give your mixed dizzy, you'll get there, okay? You'll have an opportunity in which you'll be able to help again, somehow. I know it will happen. Just take care of yourself until the opportunity comes. Don't kick yourself, okay? It might not come in the way that you expect it either. You, it might be, it might not be what you, how you used to help. It might be something different, but you will have an opportunity again. Jessica Metal says, a phrase my older brother taught me about learning to ask for things is closed mouths don't get fed. That is true if you're a baby bird and if you're a human. Okay, everybody. We did the segment. Okay, that was a that was a chore. Getting through that was hard. But I want to show you what we final what we finished with, okay? We're gonna go for one quick, quick review. Everybody fucking focus, okay? Why is isolating bad? You coy? Humans are social creatures. Yes, even, even people who like their privacy, even introverts are still social creatures. You cannot isolate yourself. If you isolate yourself, it will, it, you will, if hardship comes your way, you have no one to turn to. We believe in solidarity. We believe in working together. That is how humans have thrived through all of history. Isolating yourself is not the answer. It isn't, okay? Okay, here we go. How can I help? We're gonna call this, how can I help ways to, in, ways to not die and not have others die during the coming times, okay? This will be an accessible doc. I will put this up in a special area on the Discord soon, okay? Hey, welcome, Adria Staley. Happy to see you. Okay, ready? If you are rich, if you are, if you have your own house, stable income, and trust fund, you can donate directly to people in need, aka you can literally just give money to somebody who needs it. You can just write a check. If you're really, really rich, you can do that. You just got to find them. Go find the people in need. Give them fucking money. It can, there's a hundred ways to do this. Some people do that to me. They like my show. They give me money. That helps me because... This show is the way I pay my bills, but I'm not the only way. There's many other ways to do that. If you see somebody in need, help them. Secondly, directly alleviate the hardships of family and or friends. If you are the rich person in your family or if you're one of the rich people in your family and somebody in your family or your friend group is struggling, offer to help them. You have the resources. If you have the resources, you can ensure that they don't become homeless. Remember, the cycle of poverty is cruel. If you save somebody from getting evicted, evictions stick on your record and other rental places won't rent to you. You understand that, right? So if you save a family member from eviction, that could change their life. 
Coordinate directly with local mutual aid groups and other direct relief charities. This is for rich people, again, for rich and stable people. If, if you have the money and time, communicate with direct mutual aid. And the reason that I'm saying this is because right now national charities, writing a check to the, to the, to the Red Cross can be helpful, but it's going to take time. These organizations move slowly. These organizations were designed for, uh, to move at a, at a normal pace during normal conditions. We are not in normal conditions. Give to local mutual aid and direct relief charities. That's where your money will have the most impact these days. I'm serious, okay? Okay. Finally, organize or set up mutual aid orgs in your area. If you are well off and you have lots of time, you could be the person who builds the mutual aid group or organization in your area. If you have that ability, please, this is the perfect time to do it. If you go online and you find out that your town doesn't have a mutual aid group, set it up. Invite some friends to come help you with it. Start giving out meals, okay? Seriously. Seriously, okay? Tora Nala says, what even is normal? There isn't normal. We're never going back. Just get that out of your minds. Life is never going back to what you remember pre-pandemic. I'm telling you that right now. It's gone. It's gone. The world, we live in a new world now. I'm just... I'm telling you that right now, okay? We that is never coming back. We live in a new world and you and we all need to adjust to that and that means evolving. That's right. You just lived through a through a a a, a era shift. Next, if you're safe but not well off, okay? Volunteer with local food pantries and mutual aid organizations. Again, food pantries and mutual aid orgs. Not Goodwill, not Key Club, fucking Local food pantries and mutual aid orgs. Help organize and spread the word. If you have time but not necessarily money, write emails, post posters, hand out leaflets, use your skills. If you're safe but not necessarily well off, give small amounts via gift cards or cash directly to those in lead. Some examples, truck stop gift cards can be used to get people hot showers. Restaurant gift cards can be used for people to get food. Walmart gift cards can be used for medicine, shoes, etc. Donate what you are not using. Don't donate it to Goodwill. Don't donate it to Salvation Army. Donate to food pantries, food banks, clothing banks, etc. I'm serious. Please. Don't, uh, to friends and family, give directly, okay? Not to, not to these, these organizations that resell stuff. I'm serious. That is really important. That would make a big difference. If we could get people giving to giving actually giving away instead of giving it to the Goodwill who then sells it to people who who have money to buy it. Like, I love thrifting. Don't get me wrong. What is the website that follows reputable charities? Uh, Charity Navigator. CharityNavigator.org. It's right there. Exclamation charity. If you want to check charities, that's your website. Okay, next, donate your skills. Haircuts, foraging, sewing, repairing, tutoring. That's another one I should put on there, okay? Fantastic. These are fantastic, okay? It's true. There are people who need your skills and you can choose to give them and share them and it can change the world, okay? Next, this is the other one. I know people who keep aid packages in their cars. Think plastic bags with soap, towelettes, first aid stuff, snacks, baby wipes, toothpaste, menstrual products, etc. These are this is a cheap way to keep you can keep this in your car, you can put this in a bag. If you go out and you see somebody who's begging or who's in need, give them the bag. These bags can cost you as little as three to five dollars and it could change somebody's life. Okay? Next. If you yourself are in danger or unstable financially, okay? Reach out to others. Remember the rule, do not die. Two, cooperate with each other. Do not allow yourself to suffer alone. Get roommates, communicate with your roommates to accommodate your needs. Co communicate with your family if you have a family that is able to work with you. If, if, if you don't have people in your life who are kind, find them, network, meet people who are kind. Three. Connect, 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 okay? 
tenants unions, state bar association and law schools, LGBT centers in your area, mutual aid, buy swap trade. Also, here's another one. Student dental clinics. You can get free or cheap teeth cleaning and teeth care from student dental clinics. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's way better than no dental care. I promise you, I, my childhood, I was very poor, okay? When my, when I lived, when I was a kid, we, we went to the student dental clinics. That's where we went when I was a kid. We didn't have the money for it, okay? Okay, next, minors. Uh, this is for minors. School is useful, okay? I know it sucks. School fucking sucks, but do your best, okay? I know it sucks to put your head, to put your nose to the grindstone. I'm not trying to tell you that you need to love school or be a goody two-shoes or anything, but at least recognize that if you get your degree, you will be better off. Your chance of survival goes way up, okay? Your chance of being able to escape poverty conditions goes way up if you finish your school. And while you're at school, you can loot, you can use, you can learn lots of useful stuff, okay? You just have to get creative, okay? Secondly, volunteer through your school if you have time and ability. Like I said, volunteer orgs will frequently come to schools, okay? And they will just, they'll just say, hey kids, if you want to volunteer, sign up now and you can do it, okay? You can do that. You can just say, yeah, sure, I'll show up and then have your mom or your dad take you to the thing. Consider trade schools, okay? If you're in high school right now, if you're a minor, you do not have to go to college. College is not the only option. You can still learn all the cool shit you wanna do. You can still become a filmmaker. You can still become a video game designer. You can still become an animator without necessarily having to go to college right away. You can go to a trade school, learn some really amazing, helpful life skills that you actually might really turn out to enjoy, and then you can still pursue your art. Super, super useful. And that's only if you're an artsy type. Some people just love the trade that they do. So don't be afraid to do that, okay? Finally, those who are currently severely in danger or financially in danger, do not die, do not hesitate to ask for help, do not hesitate to accept help, and do not isolate yourself, okay? And that's everything. This is everything. This is all that we need to know, okay? This is it, that's the thing. We'll add to this as time goes on, we'll add ideas, but from now on, we have this.